Welcome back, everyone. I hope you're having an amazing day. I wish you well. And today, man, this is a weird ass story. We're dealing with the worst user rated game of 2024, the ninth worst rated game on Steam ever. Of course, the Battlefront Classic Collection. It's uh, it's got a mountain to climb. Now, look, there are many people having fun because fundamentally the Battlefront games are awesome, but Obviously, the narrative is really setting in, especially on PC. It's very obvious that this is not a good time. And that's why the team at Asper absolutely do not need the scene's modders being rather furious that they are seeing uncredited modded content in the official game release. And in fact, it's worse than that because this content was already called out as being stolen and was supposed to be removed. This is really bizarre, and I think what's most disappointing of all is this actually does come hot off the heels of Asper showing everybody how to treat modders fairly by bringing them on board with their previous project. It's all very bizarre, and at the risk of being just a little bit cringe, I do have something to bring you on board on, and it's not today's sponsor. In fact, no, it is Games. That is our site. That is our platform. We moved off Patreon, and we're building that all with good, delicious, open source tech. But basically, if you want to support us, but also get a shitload of content, that is the place to go. We post all of our video content there early and ad free. We also post Loading Screen, which is our daily newsletter, catching you up with all of the news. And uh, of course, there's also the Members Lounge, where we all hang out and talk video games, including just how hard we all got hit by the recent Steam sale. And being real, sort of more so than ever, I am trying to build here to be strong, stable, amazing job security. That is the goal. And uh, yeah, I'm thankful for all of your support on that. Okay, let's get into today's video then. So after an update, not an apology, on the 14th, blaming critical errors with our network infrastructure, Asper is somewhat on the back foot for the release of the Battlefront Classic Collection. It's not quite the bottom of the lowest rated games on Steam, but uh, it is in the bottom 10. It's kind of funny, you know, we've got Command & Conquer 4, Tiberium Twilight, uh, a very offensive game to uh, to me as somebody who enjoyed the <laughs> Command & Conquer series. You've, of course, got Overwatch 2 there as players really voice their dissatisfaction. Funny enough, you've got Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 there, and just below that, Star Wars Battlefront Classic Collection. So at this stage, what the developers need is wins. They need wins. They need to be seen to be actually responding to problems. So there have been some good things, like they put out a bug fix, right? The first patch of the game that fixes 40 separate issues. That's a really good start. That includes things like the loading screen noises, and uh, that actually does confirm that those fixes are actually separate from identifying their server issues. So a lot of that stuff is straight up really good, but it's not going to change the conversation because, well, people are rightly rallying behind modders, modders who are claiming that their work has been found in the live build of the game and that they have not been acknowledged. So let's get into that, starting with some footage of Asajj Ventress, who previously was an Xbox platform locked, like DLC exclusive character that people were happy to have in the game natively. And one of the like on the box features of the Battlefront Classic Collection is it was all the games in one place that the uh, like the hero combat mode was basically expanded to all of the maps instead of just Moss Eisley, and that it would unify any platform specific content. What's uh, rather weird is that the character doesn't have its uh, original anime animations, right? Uh, those are not the ones that she's meant to have from the Xbox version. Uh, rather than jewel wielding, she is basically meant to have what's the equivalent of like more of a nunchuck, right? Now, this is a weird thing because the hero characters in these games have got uh, set animations. That's like a part of the design. Did Asper change it? You may ask. The answer to that is no. This is in fact a bit of evidence of them nabbing some work from a modder because what happened is a modder who ported this character to PC did recognize these animations. Uh, this person was well known for having actually built the model being used here along with the custom lightsaber hilts just for that mod. And this was so recognizable that when footage of this character appeared in the trailer, people uh, pretty immediately said, uh, hey, um, we've seen that before. That's a mod. <laughs> this is really weird. So people were making noise about that. 
IGN noticed that. IGN spoke to the modder in question, right? Uh, now, obviously, does the modder own that material? Like, no, in a legal sense, they do not. Ultimately, this stuff is owned by Lucasfilm. It's just one of those things you do obviously see a lot of control when you're making mods that are based off, like, you know, an IP that you don't own, or a game that you don't own. It's the sort of thing that, yeah, you know, it, it is what it is. We all understand that. This is less about the, like, letter of the law, and this is more just about, I mean, honestly, man, just like being a good citizen in the game development space. And that's why this just seems to be so unbelievably blatant. The idea that you would take a modder's work and then sell it. I mean, usually that's what happens when people maybe steal a mod and try to put it in the Minecraft marketplace or all of the dramas we had with paid mods where, you know, ideally, what is a paid mod? Well, it's supposed to be, hey, someone's making a mod. If we were to, you know, maybe buy the mod from them and that was to be officially supported, then maybe that person could hire a team and you know you could you could get a lot of mods made this though is is just taking someone's work putting it in your big corporate product which uh i mean yeah absolutely sucks now asper did respond to the press commentary here they responded to the accusations they said when capturing placeholder footage for our announcement last fall we mistakenly included content that is not in the product and that mistake made it into the final cut the upcoming release of star wars battlefront classic collection does not include any code or content taken from uncredited sources so with that statement being made you think oh that's it that's fine that's the end of it but uh yeah, it's not the end of it. So they made this statement, right? Saying that it was erroneously a part of, uh, you know, the, the the build of the game that was used to capture footage for the trailer. Uh, yeah, some someone evidently didn't get the memo because at least some versions of the game do actually have this content. The implication here is that this was rather hurriedly patched out of, uh, of the launch after the initial accusation but it seems that it didn't get patched out of uh, every single launch build, which is a bit weird. Basically, right, as of the time of this video being created, the belief is that the current versions of Battlefront Classic Collection on all platforms do not feature this modded content. It could be there in the game files, but it is not there in a playable form. But basically the allegation here is that as of the 18th of March, the game files contain that code. It is no longer accessible though. And you can see here this tweet from the dev just saying, seriously, I'm beginning to feel insulted. Nintendo Switch launched with just straight up all my hero stuff from the mod. Same glitches and bugs. We've data mined it and it's the exact same files just using the proper lightsaber attack animation. So this was going live in places, and uh, our modder then follows up by saying, so to add on one final time, the patches on every console that were designed to remove my content haven't actually removed them. They're still in the game files, just going unused. You know, lol, final releases have uncredited content in the game files. And it's one of those things, sometimes, yep, game files can be a, a little messy, and when you data mine in, obviously, that's where you'll find stuff the developers don't really want you to see including in many cases, you know, cut content from a game, maybe hints towards future patches, but it absolutely should not be things like this. So yeah, pretty crazy. Now there is some follow-up from IGN, which makes a lot of sense. They were in contact with the modder and uh, they did play a role in actually popularizing this story. So here are some quotes. This release has been a total mess. The fact they had to release patches both before and immediately after releasing a two decade old game really says it all, especially considering part of the patches is rumored to have completely removed content they had said they'd removed months ago. And again, it's just that the modder can then go on and talk about the graphical problems, the audio problems that they and other modders have been aware of and have been able to fix. And the implication here is quite rough. And to go back to what they said, all of these and quite a lot more are relatively easy fixes when you understand what you're doing. I'd imagine Asper could patch a lot of these quickly, but we have the resources and ability to do it ourselves and produce probably better results. This is what two decades of shared experience with these titles gives us. That's the situation. And we kind of know it to be true because this is actually the second game that Asper released this year. The other one is Tomb Raider 1 through 3 remastered starring Lara Croft 
Croft. And that's not me being weird. That's literally what these are called on Steam. What is that name? What the hell is going on? I don't know. But anyway, right? This actually was a success, though. It launched a critical acclaim. The Steam score is 88%, but it has also been plagued with some graphical issues and some oversights, right, to certain features. I mean, literally stuff like keys being invisible on certain graphics options. And uh, if you know, say the a lot of the core design tools of games of this era, uh, yeah, you really do want to be able to see the keys. But anyway, do you know what this game did not have? It did not have stolen content, even though it did have modded content. And do you know why? They explicitly found and hired modders from the scene, including this one, right? So let's just go to, uh, you know, to what he has said. For those who are interested in the fate of Open Lair and my other projects, they are on hold. For the past year, I have been busy with a dream project that has become the culmination of the last eight years of my life, Tomb Raider 1 through 3 Remastered. So look, I mean, would it be kind of neat if we all just got the open source version and uh you know it, it wasn't a thing that we were buying i mean yeah sure but in this case this is the thing to do the modders the person with the experience hire them do the project right and uh, i suppose actually respect the legacy of the original tomb raider games which is exactly what happened here and that's the bit that's i mean is kind of insane it also does suggest that uh, in this case our modder from battlefront is right that if the team like who were working this had the time and the knowledge and the resources they could have done stuff better and evidently with tomb raider when they didn't have all of the time knowledge and resources they were able to go out find a specialist who happened to be a modder and do things right. I mean, the idea of hiring modders, I think that that is absolutely incredible. I'm not saying, hey, you should go there and try to be a modder so that you could land a job at a game studio. Like, that is not a high chances of success uh, path. But I would absolutely say, go make mods. That's an amazing thing to have in your CV. Just, you know, don't make a Starfield mod and hope that Todd will hire you, I suppose. But this is awesome. This is exactly how it should go. And this is, uh, I mean, this is almost a legitification of uh, community passion and effort. And that's why it is absolutely bloody insane that this happened with Battlefront. To me, it just speaks to a situation where perhaps Embracer Group just wanted to pull the money lever. They must have just said, okay, we, we own this. Everyone loves Battlefront. The new Battlefront actually was a big shit show. And then EA fixed it. And right as they fixed it, they then abandoned it. So surely we could have success if we do a Battlefront. I mean, I'm not saying that's what Embracer said, but it does seem to make sense. And if you look at a project like this, something which should be an absolute obvious clear win, as for the most part, Tomb Raider 1 through 3 was, well, you should be able to give that the time and actually have the confidence that if you do the job right, that the community will reward you. And that's something that everybody should be able to know because these were popular games that have got their own fairly dedicated and happy scene, at the very least on PC. That that didn't happen, to me, that just kind of says somebody was trying to pull the give us the money right now lever. It's weird. I mean, Asper, they're not necessarily pumping out releases anymore. In fact, 2022 was the first year since 2015 that they didn't have four ports releasing and uh, 2023 had none. So it's pretty rough and confusing that now in 2024, this has happened. But the thing is, that's not the full story with Asper. Obviously, they took a lot of flack for Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2 on Switch. That is a situation where they were actually not able to deliver promised updates for the game. And that, that, like, that is not just saying, hey, we'll fix a few bugs. They had promised that they would have been including some unofficial uh, restoration mod stuff for the game on the Switch version. And that never happened, which is obviously a fairly severe betrayal. And there is all the, you know, KOTOR remake stuff that has been a shit show and has went between various studios, including Asper, which certainly has just left a lot of people being honestly kind of confused about what the hell's going on. But basically, it seems to me that they're just being given no time to actually prepare these games for a polished launch. It just seems to be a case of, you know, let's capitalize on like brands that we have and big IPs and people's memories. Let's pull the nostalgia lever, but in a way that is just thoroughly, I mean, bankrupt and cynical and horrible and not respecting of games. It just speaks to studio management who are desperate to do something, to release something. And maybe, you know, this could be Embracer saying money now. It could also be the leadership of Asper saying money now because they're aware that Embracer Group is cutting things to pieces in efforts to save money. I don't know exactly what's going on here, but this is evidently not how things should be. 
in our industry. I think the power of modders is absolutely amazing. And I do think that the more collaboration between modders and the industry that happens, in some ways, I think almost, uh, almost the better. Like, look, I do like there being a bit of a Wild West. I think that's very important. I want the Wild West to continue. But obviously, modders have, in many cases, got this amazing gut feeling uh, and sort of perception of what the players actually want because they themselves are players and they're experiencing these games. Yes, having development knowledge, being very skilled, primarily as players. And I think that's a really strong insight to have when you're entering game development. That's why I think that working with modders, that sort of thing, I think that can be extremely fruitful which is why it is just sad to see a situation like this. But anyway, look, folks, that is it for today's story. There are many others happening on the channel, though the news is flowing fast. And uh, certainly the team here, uh, you know, we're, we're going hard. There's a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff to cover, a lot of stuff to talk about. If you want to get absolutely everything, of course, be sure to go to bellular.games over there. You can sign up. And once you do, you'll be able to read every edition of Loading Screen, um, of course, on our website or in uh, just your email newsletter, you know, your, your mailbox every day, whatever you prefer, as well as, of course, you'll get early access to our videos and you'll get them ad-free. That's it for me. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you next time.